Awesome. So we are live, Watchy. Uh, attendees are rolling in now. We'll wait a couple of minutes for everyone to get here. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, you can use the chat box. Let us know where you're calling in from. When you're sending a message, make sure you hit all panelists and attendees so everybody can see those messages. Um, I'm calling in from Boston, Massachusetts in the US. And then we have Wachi in Cusco, Peru. And then we will kick things off in just two minutes. You guys are in for a real treat today. Uh, we have our incredible CEO here um, taking us to the Inca Trail. And we have an awesome opportunity from our friends at Crag Hoppers uh, for a giveaway. So stay tuned for details on that. You already have questions. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we've got everybody letting us know where they're coming in from. We've got Cape Town, uh, London, uh, Canada, Toronto, Sweden. Calgary, Arizona. We've got people from all over, which is incredible. Um, I think they're all wondering to learn more about the Inca Trail, maybe relive their experiences. And we'll just give it one more minute, maybe two more minutes. This is great. Wow, we are about to hit 300. Ooh. Yeah. We've got we've got a busy busy group today, which is awesome. A lot of interest in the Inca Trail and we will have a lucky winner among this group for for a prize to get all geared up to do the Inca Trail when we are able to travel again. We've got Laura who is supposed to be on the Inca Trail in April, so she's looking forward to seeing it today. So hopefully this will keep your adventure dreams alive until we are able to get out and travel again. We're right. All right. And I think for now we can kick things off. Um, and then for anyone who hops on later, they'll just jump into the tour when it starts. Uh, but hello, hi everybody. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. If this is your first tour or your fifth tour or your eighth tour with us um, as we've continued this series of live virtual small group tours with G Adventures as we continue to stay home and stay connected. I'm Cassandra and I'm here to ensure you have a smooth trip. Um, named the best Inca Trail tour operator in Peru, we offer several award-winning trekking routes and today we are taking you on one of them virtually and we have Wachi as our CEO and trekking guide for this experience. And also, lucky for all of you today, our friends at Crag Hoppers are going to help one lucky winner get Inca Trail ready with an amazing prize to help kit them out with everything they need for the trek. This includes a 20 liter day pack and a pair of Salado high trekking boots. Uh, we will be picking three runners up to receive, receive Crag Hopper Nelson t-shirts. Uh, the winner must be in attendance at the end of the webinar to win the prize. So hang tight and we'll announce the winner at the end. To kick things off, we will be selecting a handful of lucky viewers, that's you guys, to join in on this live tour. And how does that work? If you're selected, you'll jump on the live panel with myself and Wachi to give you the opportunity to ask questions on the line and be a part of a true small group experience. We do ask that you have your video on for this and everyone else, you'll stay connected through viewing and the chat box. So if you're interested in joining the live tour, you can raise your hand through the Zoom button. And I will be moving a few people over to panelists right now. Um, so hang tight as we get our group ready. And if you are a panelist, we'd love to see your face so you can turn your camera on. Hello, hello. So we've got people coming in now. Um, 
rolling into the live group. Um, so just hang tight for one moment. So hi, everybody. Welcome and thank you for hi. joining our adventure to Machu Picchu. And so here we have the opportunity to have a true small group experience and you'll have the chance to ask questions, chat and connect. But for now, we just ask you have your video on and your audio muted. And if you have questions throughout, you can feel free to leave them in the chat box, raise your hand or unmute your line. And for everyone watching, I'll be sharing questions with Wachi throughout. So please leave them in the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. And so if you're all ready, Wachi is gonna take us on a virtual adventure of trekking the Inca Trail. You ready, Wachi? Oh yes, I'm ready, I'm waiting, I'm excited for this. So good morning, good afternoon, and maybe good evening to everybody. Thank you for getting connected to this virtual tour. Uh, my name is Washington, and I want you now to call me Wachi. Myself, I was born in this city of Cusco, and I actually grew up here too, and actually went to tourism school and got educated right here in the city. My experience in guiding, it's almost 10 years. It was supposed to be 11, you know, 10, okay? So 10 years doing Inca Trail, Lares, Salcantay, all the different hiking tricks that we have. I specialize in adventure, and I hope that experience that I have can help us now to get through. So thank you for getting connected, and let's get to start with our virtual tour. Let me first explain to you what's going to be this tour about. Look, Cusco is the starting point. The tour that we have now is made of six days. First day, let's call it the adjusting day. Second day will be the Secret Valley Day. And the third will start the next days of the Inca Trail, okay? So let's see. First, we're going to go or land in Cusco, right? The beautiful city of Cusco, Cusco or Cusco as we have in the native language. Whereabouts, lots of people speak the native language that is called Quechua, okay? So you land at about 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning or something like this. And of course, we go to the airport, we pick up you, bring you to the hotel, leave the luggage in the hotel, get your camera, get your sunblock, get your hat, or perhaps after the weather, get your, um, your rain poncho as well. And we get on a little orientation walk. Look at this. This is the beautiful city of Cusco, center of the world, actually, the Inca world, right? Knowing that Colombia, Ecuador, Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, and obviously Peru were part of the Inca kingdom. And this was the capital. Look at that construction. Of course, this is not Inca. This is uh, 16th uh, century constructions that we can see, right? And lots of the houses here are pretty old as well. After we you know, take you uh, around the streets, we actually take you uh, to a place where we can have lunch. And then everything is going slow because we are just adjusting. Adjusting day because you came up to 3,350 meters, which in foot, that is 10,500 foot. So we just relax, we are you know, taking it easy. And after lunch, we are moving to, in Cusco, to the office of G Adventures called the Sun Gate. It's a office because we have big operations down here in Cusco, right, of the different hikes. And when you come here, you will see one of these people, just a team in Cusco, up here in Cusco, it is made of 72 people. In between women and men, they are head guides and assistant guides. All the tour guides that you can see here, they have gone to tourism school. So to get your license, oh yeah, that's a license, guide license or no credential, you have to go to tourism school, okay? So everybody is educated and second, everybody's trained. Like we usually train maybe once a year, trained by the International Red Cross, all of us, we have our certification provided by them. We are trained by police, by firemen, by mountaineering people as well. So we have our training and we know what to do when something happens on the mountain, right? So one of these guys is going to be your tour guide on the Inca Trail. You meet them, you get all the information that is needed in this day, and in this day as well, you can get this information and this stuff you are going to leave your main luggage at the hotel. And we are providing you this duffel bag. This duffel bag is for the things that you will need on the Inca Trail, but the things that the porters will carry for you, okay? So you have a day pack for yourself and then the duffel bag that is given to the porters. So then here in Cusco, if you know 
if you want to take some extra things, we have to uh, tell you this. We only put six kilos in this duffel bag. We would like to take more, but we can not. So the porters are in charge of carrying those duffel bags. And if you are not coming with, you know, sleeping bag and things like that, you can rent it down here. Basically, what you need to carry every single day on the Ingot will be a day pack where you can pay, put your one extra layer with you, your water, your sunblock, your glasses, uh, some snacks, and then you know, start hiking, right? So let's uh, see. Once we you know, get ready all of this, we spend a night, a beautiful night in the city of Cusco, and then we start the second day. So we already moved to the second day. What is the second day about? The second day for us is the interaction day. Actually, in this day, we take the opportunity to uh, show you and let you know what Planet Terra is doing. By the way, Planet Terra is the partner of G-Adventures, a non-profit organization that has been running projects throughout the world. And in Peru, this is the very first project. We have drive for about half an hour in the second day of the Sacred Valley, and we already made it to Cacacoyo community, which is the weaver's supported project that we have. Look. Right here, you have llamas. There is a traveler that is taking pictures of the llamas, right? So you have the time to be with them, to interact with them, and to talk with them. Remember that I mentioned that in Cusco, lots of people speak the native language. We are bilingual. Well, we also speak Spanish, but in these communities, they are born with this native language called Quechua. Why do we take you to this place? Well, first of all, these women, since 500 years ago, are still using the techniques and tools that the Inca people were using. And the same no way they are still making textiles that we are showing you how they process. It's made with alpaca fiber, but for us that is a very fine fiber and in the world it's very expensive fiber as well. So we show you the whole process in this place. Well, you have the chance to interact with these people, right? To talk with them, to see what is the process, and we kind of get you, you know, to see how the women do this. There is a little video that I would like to show you here, and you can see what is going on. Oops. So actually, she's using alpaca fiber and she's stretching using the drop spindle, right, to spin it and make the cord. With the cord, that is well spin at the end, she will make beautiful textile. You can see the clothing of that woman, it was made exactly in the same way, right? So what the tour guide and the people are laughing of is that they don't just do it seriously. They can do it dancing when they use the drop spindle. So let's move to the next one. We spend something like an hour, you actually have the chance to, uh, you know, stay like an hour in this place and actually to shop some uh, souvenirs. And then we go to the next place. In this day is the Sacred Valley tour, the second day of this, of this adventure. Sacred Valley collected like that by the quality of soil, quality of food that is growing in this place that later on we will have for lunch. Look at that view. This is in a sunny day, but even in a sunny day, you can see some clouds in this place. Actually, there is a mountain range on the right. It's the second largest mountain range of glaciers. We have something like 469 glaciers on the right. So it's you know, something to see because there is permanent water that comes from the mountain and the farmers are all the year you know, growing their food. Just to let you know how fertile the soil could be here, they grow. 35 different types of corn, okay? And one of them, the kernel is three centimeters big. Can you imagine that? Three centimeters big. Just imagine to make the popcorn of this, right? To see what's the size of this. So we stop after half an hour, what? Where we drive to this place, we stop here, but then we go to the next, you know, G Adventures for a good moment that we are experiencing in this place. We are still in the Sacred Valley of the Incas, and we had arrived now to a community called Cuyo Chico, located in front of this mountain. Can you see what I am pointing right here, those horizontal lines? Surely you've been in other countries, and especially where there is ancient you know, cultures, and you could see those terraces, right, for agriculture. Here, those terraces were built 880. Well, that's how old this construction is, right? 
You don't see the town, I don't really see, but I know where exactly this one is. It's on top of the mountain, it's not this one. We don't go to this place, but we have the view. But the main reason why we come to this place, after looking at the view, is to see this. Our G Adventures for a Good Moment, it's about to happen. Look at what happens to you. When you come in the community, each community has the way to welcome travelers, very nice people. And they put, in this case, flowers on top of you. And it's supposed that the flowers will bless you with more life and more hope. That's the way, the way how they welcome you. Can you imagine that? Who puts flowers for you when you are visiting someone, right? So let's move a bit more to see the exact reason why we are visiting this place. Chicken the bricks. Those are made of mud and straw. They are mixing up those. Of course, the, the, the ground or the soil, I mean, the soil has some uh, clay, but I mean, that's helping to make these bricks. Using this mold, he's going to make these bricks in 30 seconds, okay? And you can see the house behind. That house is like 50 years old, but still standing, nothing happened, not much maintenance, and it's very rainy, the place, in the rain season. So yeah, they show us things like this. But the main reason why we are coming here is this. Look at that. You want to be ex experiencing a good time with the people? That's your option. Because by tradition, they are potters. And they've been using clay to make so many different things. And you can make your own if there is enough time for sure, right? So we are into this. And at the end, if you would like to support them, there you have all the different you know, things that they have for selling. After visiting these people, we are already like 11, 30, 12, pretty hungry. So we can move to our lunch place. And for this, we are getting back on our van and driving for about an hour until we get to the actual community where we have lunch. So it's just driving along the valley, but we are surprised by something. In Peru, you know that guinea pigs are food. In Cusco, there is one festivity, the famous one, Corpus Christi, where in about two days, we need 100,000 guinea pigs, not for pets. We cook them, we roast them. And in this section of the ballet, you can see women waiting for you, actually, with a stick and the guinea pig in the stick, and the guinea pig is roasted. And that's not for travelers, that's just for local people, right? So if you would like, Part of our experience is to make a soft bag guinea pig split in many pieces and you can take a bite of uh, the guinea pig. But that's not the reason why we are visiting this community. No. Look, you may think when you say this that they worship guinea pig, right? Because there's a statue, but no. It's because they roast the guinea pig. Look at that way of roasting the guinea pig. Chicken this traditional way of roasting this guinea pig, right? It's basically the guinea pig and they you know, put lots of herbs inside of the guinea pig and then they roast them. That's it, right? Okay, by the way, let me tell you that if you come, guinea pig is 0% cholesterol, right? But five more minutes of driving and we can already get to, actually the most successful project that we have up here in Cusco. It's a restaurant in the community of Cuchu Cusco, which in English will mean small Cusco. Okay, that's in the native language for sure. And this is the place. It's a restaurant, one more, once more, owned by the community. And the project was started in 2014. And well, until last year, it was working very well, right? So look at the view and the location of this place. Somewhere around uh, the mountains, in the middle of the mountains, the altitude of this place is 3,000. That is, 3,000 is 900, 8,000 foot. Yeah, it's high elevation, but a beautiful lunch. These women, or, and these men, are the ones that grow the food right there. And that food that is growing in that organic soil, it's coming on your table, right? And these are the first time that we can tell you that these people have had a official job with all the benefits that the law says. So this is one way that we can let you see how tourism can actually make a positive impact in those communities, right? So after spending our time in this place, look at that beautiful dessert. I'm not showing you the main course. I just showed the first picture was about the started and now there is just the appetizer. I'm not showing you the main course because you have to come and see what is this about, right? Well, 
after spending some time, it's already like two in the afternoon in the second day, we're going to drive for one more hour to get to a town, which in Peru and throughout South America, wherever the Inca kingdom had expanded, is the only one that is still called Inca living town. An Inca living town because this place is still on. The houses have, have not changed. And this place is still owned by families that, you know, got this from their ancestors as well. So look at the beautiful view that we can see here, right? This is afternoon. Somewhere down here, we have the hotel. You see these buildings right here? Those are food storage houses. We climb with you. We take you up here. It's not that long. It's only like 20 to uh, 25 minutes. And we enjoy the view, but also we get in the streets of this town. 70% of this town is still original. And we have the whole afternoon to spend the time in this place. Actually, we spend the night in this place, right? Look at those streets. Look at the walls that we have inside. And that is still in use. That's one of the reasons why it's called Inca Living Town, right? So we spend the night here. To this point, it's already the second day. One more, once more, Cusco, you landed at 3,350, uh, 3, 10,500 foot. Right? Then we are spending the second night at 2,750, and that is actually like 9,000 foot. Tell me, maybe there is some questions in the, in two, for these two days. Cass? Hey, Wachi, we're getting a, a bit of questions about dietary requirements. Um, and are you able to accommodate for vegetarians and, or vegans while on the trip? Well, on the trek, well, already in this day, actually, in Cusco, since you start, since you come here, in the Peruvian culture, vegetarian people is already growing, right? But also, we have uh, implemented, in a way, in the different restaurants, you know, menus, where you can see, you know, what kind of food dishes have lactose, if you are gluten intolerance, if you are vegetarian, if you are vegan, right? And yeah. during this stay in the restaurant, of course, why not? These people were trained in this community. They already have a chef, so of course it works. Now on the hike, let me tell you that whatever option you have, whatever option you would like to have, it would be there. So vegetarian, vegan, gluten, no lactose intolerant, for the people that come with us, that's not a problem. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wachi. Okay. All right. In that case, first day, adjusting day. Second day, it was the interaction day with the people that live in the communities and they are the ones that keep the tradition of Peru alive. Now, let's see what happens with us. We spend the night in this place, Inca Living Town, and the next day, which will be the third day, but the first day of the Inca Trail, we start, we get on the van at about eight in the morning. We are driving for about an hour until we get to this point, which is called Kilometer 82. I'm going to move back on the map to show you that Kilometer 82 is just the distance of the train tracks that you can take to go to Machu Picchu by train. So, Actually, this is the end of the road. So you only have a chance to go to Machu Picchu by train, by the Inca Trail, if you're an expert swimmer by the river, right? So that's the end of the bus ride. Kilometer 82 is where actually these people will be waiting for us. Our porters, they are getting ready everything. Look at that uniform that they have. All of this is provided by us for sure. You can see the column support as well. And they are getting ready because they have to get through checkpoints. And in every checkpoint, they check, they weight the backpack. The regulations in Peru says that they should carry 20 kilos, no more than that. And that's the reason why they, are, they weight the backpacks and they make sure they have equal weight amount of them. We arrive to this place. We give them our duffel bags where we have things we are not using in the day because they are not walking with us. They will wait for us at the camp or at the lunch place, right? That's why we have our day pack where you can take everything you need, need access to. So we get, in this day, 11 kilometers. Look at this chart. We get 11 kilometers until we walk to, until we get to the camp. Elevation that we start at, you can see, two six. That is one more time, like nine thousand foot, a little bit less than nine thousand foot, right? That's elevation, and we in this day gain three hundred and fifty meters. 
that's like a thousand foot, right? Until we get to the camp and the camp actually is by 9,800 foot. So, and this day is split in two sections. Three hours until we get to lunch place and then two more hours until we get to the camp. Altitude won't bother you in this day. Let's call this day our training day, our easy day, right? Because we are getting used to the mountains, look to, used to the heat, looks used to the, uh, you know, the walking that is not just one hour, it's two hours, it's five hours in this day, right? So knowing what's happening in this day, let's already start. Look at this. This is the entry point to the historical sanctuary of Machu Picchu. In control, Machu Picchu inside of this. We are going to hike 45 kilometers, but in Machu Picchu historical sanctuary, we have over 300 of those Inca Trail no, system, network of Inca Trails. And we also have about 190 remains of towns and communities that were left by the Inca people. But all of this sanctuary, by the way, it's a UNESCO site, it was lost for about 400 years. Can you imagine that? That there was no human presence in the whole park. That's why the vegetation you no know, could well, could be well protected. Not just that. In Machu Picchu historical century, flora, fauna, geological formation, plus ten life songs. So every day is a different day, and every day is a surprising day. Look at that, there you have your Inca warriors on the side and the people are very relaxed because they know that this day is just, you know, relaxing day. And look at this, there is people using hiking poles. Actually, it's well recommended that you can use hiking poles. You have it with you, perfect. You don't have it with you. You don't want to buy a, a pair of new hiking poles. Here in the office of Cusco, the Sandgate office, when you come here before the Inca Trail, you can rent sleeping bags and you can rent hiking poles, right? So you don't need, to, you don't want to be bothered on the plane carrying these uh, you no know, pieces of metal with you. And it's well recommended and especially two with you. So let's see. We are going to walk from kilometer 82 for about a hour until we get to this place, Cochinil Corner. Already the fun starts and there we go. I want you to see uh, something that happens. You can see the ballet is just uh, not flat, but it's moving up and down. There is the cochineal corner and we stop at this corner because there is this cactus, it's Opuntia ficus or prickly pear cactus as the name is in different places. And we do this. <laughs> we pick up some insects and we paint ourselves, right? That's how we build the spirit of the people. So when you come here, it's not that you're going to walk on your own or just a guide in the front. Now we try to keep it together to build actually a friendship. So after we uh, stop at this corner, we keep moving. And we walk for something like two and a half, two, no, I'm saying wrong. It's like one and a half hours. And we're still moving up and down until we get to a corner. You can see how quickly we are moving. A corner that gives us this view from nothing there is a surprise right there look at this view that we can see right the valley that you can see on the right it's going down to Machu Picchu but we are not taking this valley we are going to take the valley that you can see on the left because we are climbing the mountain right some some something like this is how high the mountain will be like the top of that mountain well this uh, place is showing us how we are moving from the high Andean valleys, the one uh, a life zone, down to the subtropical rainforest. So you can see the change. Little by little, it's getting dry. High Andean valley, and down here, well, already the beginning here of the subtropical rainforest where Machu Picchu is located, right? So let's get another angle of this place, of this town. One of the, well, one of the informations we have is from 2006, when there was made an excavation in this place, and they found a cave somewhere here, and in the cave they found skeletons, and they found hammers, and they found chisels down here, where you can see all the stones. They tried to understand what these people were doing. Obviously, their business was agriculture. You can see all the land in the surroundings of this town, right? Up here in the upper, there is the houses of these people. But what these people were doing at the end, what they understood is that every dry season they were going down and in the rain season they were coming back. 
They were not nomads, no. They were going down and the whole community was going down with their tools and everything because they are Machu Picchu builders. So what they had discovered is that these inhabitants were Machu Picchu builders, right? So like that, we have lots of surprises of this place. Now, we now move a little bit here and we can see that we are on the upper part of this town. Obviously, that was for nobility. You can see that the houses are made of stones, but this is older than Machu Picchu, but didn't collapse, even that we have lots of rain this day, right? So to this point, we already had walked like two and a half hours. We we're spending our time, but it's already lunch time. So let's walk a little bit downhill and then some flat altogether is like half an hour until we get to our first lunch. And obviously has to be a surprise. I want you to see this picture. The porters, they will walk faster than you. They actually stand after you, but they pass us on the way. They get to the place, they set up the tents. You know, they welcome us. You can see on the table with some drinks and well, people are waiting and you know, it's getting you no. Know, a little surprise in the time people are questioning what kind of food is going to come this guy comes and ta -da! look at that beautiful food your cook hikes with you your waiter hikes with you it's a whole team if we are 16 for a team like this for a group of, of this of this size we have something like 26 porters about okay so that's lots of people. And of course, your cook is not carrying much. Your waiter will come to your tent and surprise you like this. I'm not showing you that many pictures of the different dishes that we have on the Inca Trail because then you won't like to come, right? So let's see, we spend our time, we have lunch, and then possibly we advise you this. Possibly you can get in this. What is this? Look at that picture. Check on the porter. Look at the traveler. Look at the, the backpacks they are carrying. You can understand that they had switched backpacks and they want to go together. Actually, we recommend you to go for any time you want, for five minutes, for the whole, you not know, two hours until you get to the camp. You see, it's one of the things that G Adventures Tour Guides started on the Inca Trail and what we call to this is Porter Challenge. Lots of people actually decide to do the Porter Challenge. And not just men, don't think that, ah, no, just boys are going to get into this. No, I want you to show this video of this uh, traveler who decided uh, to do this. And even before she... <laughs> Look at that, a little dance that she's doing, right? Yeah, it's, it's heavy. One, once more, the backpack of the porter weights 20 kilos, right? Not more than that. So you can try if you would like. This is just to show you the way how in G Adventures we are doing this, this tour. So let's move to the camp. We already had walk till this point in this first day for about three hours, right? We have lunch and we still have two more hours to go by this valley, remember that the valley on the right is going to Machu Picchu by the valley, but this is following the old Inca trail of 46 kilometers. And we move to the first camp. Let's see. We had walked two more hours. We already get to 3,000 meters. That in foot, one moves once more. It is 9,800 foot. And we are spending the night in this community. Right? Actually, the people in this community were living before the government you know, makes a park here. So somehow they have the right to stay in this place. Once we get to this place, it's not that you get in your tent and that's it. No, we get you in a little discovery. Discover who is the people that is hiking with you. Can you see these two people in the picture in the white? They are your cooks, right? For 16 people, we don't have one, we have two cooks. Then all the porters that you have around, you interact. You may not speak the language, but we find a way that you can interact with our people, right? There you can see the Inca warriors, that's the name for us, Inca warriors for the tour guides on the sides, right? And the whole group, of course, is happy. The porters? are the ones that are in charge to set the tents. Your tent, dining tent, kitchen tent, make your lunch, right? Pack everything, set the camp. And your job is to walk, eat, sleep, and repeat for sure, right? So that's what's happening with us on the way. Now, we already uh, no, finished the first day. Now, let's see what is happening on the second day. 
a well-known second day. Everywhere the second day is known to be the hardest, to be the painful day, to be, you know, a difficult day. But I don't think it's like that. Lots of the people that I took to the Inca Trail agreed with me that this day wasn't that hard. But the way how we said it, okay? And we call it the challenging day, right? Challenging because you are by a 3,000 or 9,000 foot, and then you go up to 4,200 meters or to 13,700 foot. And in meters, that will be like 1,200 meters. Elevation you gain in foot is something like 3,800 foot, right? So everybody is scared because they stay at the altitude and everything. Yes, it's high altitude, but the way how we do it is like this. First, distance, the whole distance until we get to the camp is 12 kilometers, right? We split this in four sections. First stop, second stop, third stop, and finally the last stop. So four sections, three sections going up, and we make a stop in every you know, uh, st spot that you can see, and finally we get to our camp. And even better, this day we start early, and we get to the camp in between one or two in the afternoon, right? So let's see what else we are going to finding this day let's go back on our map and see which way we're going to go so this is a valley that is going all the way up to a glacier that we have on that side but we are turning right and there you see already on the second day at about six in the morning we started our walk and we walked for about an hour until we get to this place right one hour going up we try to keep you know the whole group together and we make lots of stops on the way because we are getting through the forest. We see lots of plants. We see beautiful views like this, the trail on the side, the stream on, on, the, on the other side and surrounded by the forest with lots of different plants that we can learn about, right? So look at the whole group, happy if they're climbing the mountain, but happy with a big smile right there. Now, after the hour, we start with the second part. And the second section of this will take about one and a half hours, right? There you say, first stop and then second stop. When you get to the second stop, you already are at 3,800. Remember, you started by 3,000. And you, now you will be at 3,800. That in foot, that is like uh, 12,000 foot. And then you can see at the end, the top of the mountain, right? Actually, in this place, you find a checkpoint and you find women that sell drinks in this place. You won't believe this. They also sell cigarettes. People smoke. Well, some people who smoke. There is the women right there that are selling drinks. So you still have a chance. But this is the last point, right? Until you get to much picture, nothing that you can find on the way. If you want to enjoy a beer on top of the mountain, there you can still find it. Your bottle of beer, your can of beer in this place. Let me tell you, the second part perhaps is the challenging uh, part of the day because we have lots of steps here you can see behind these people but we make lots of stops right we don't want you to go all no just quick and get to the place no we actually set the pace and we ask you to walk slow because that's the way things you we need to, to you know keep ourselves relaxed on this climbing now if you think the porters go by a different way and they get to the camp early because they were cheating and all of that, no, look at that. The porters, they go by the same way. They hike together with you and they obviously walk faster, but we can see them on the way. They are carrying everything, the equipment. We don't leave anything on the Inca Trail, even the garbage. We don't leave anything once we start this tour. We take everything with us and even the garbage outside of the park, right? So some people, decide to do the portal challenge on the last section before you get to the top on the third section of this second day and they do it look at that these people they decided to go and the portals are with them in case someone decides you know, not to uh, carry the backpack anymore right so let's get to the top now let's uh, walk the last two hours but let's split this last section in two right we walk together or we have different dynamics. If you cannot catch up with the people on the front, it's all right. This is at 4,000. Look at that fantastic view of the Andes that we can have from here, right? There is a guy here whose name is Roddy, which we wish you a good recovery, Roddy. He is uh, you know, talking and explaining things to his travelers, making them forget you know, about the elevation and things like that. Right? And everybody's relaxing. So we want you to actually enjoy this. 
you cannot catch up with the group. You need extra time. You don't want to feel that pressure that you know the group makes because you have to be with them and all the time with this. You want to be at the back. It's all right. That's me with a person on the side who is 72. Can you believe that? She is 72. She did it with me and she was walking behind. So I decided to send my assistant guide on the front and I decided to stay with them. So yeah, we were not really struggling. We just walked slow and we made it to the top. Of course, there is lots of pain, but we made it to Machu Picchu, right? So can you imagine a 72 years old person could do it? And it's not the only person that I met. I met lots of people. I'm sure some of you that are watching have no friends that did it and they were about their 60s and 70s, right? But one of the requirements, active. Good to be active, right? She's that woman who's quite active. After spending something like you know, 10 minutes in this place and enjoying the view and already had catch up with breath, let's get to the top. And it's when you start breathing hard because you can feel the elevation. And then you are like, maybe you know, wishing that this is over already. But once you get to the top, you forget about you know, how hard you're breathing because you have this amazing, view and you cannot believe you're already on top of the mountain and you can tell yourself made it and this is the way how some of our groups have celebrated this the top of the mountain is well known to be the bed woman's pass well you will see soon why by the way in that picture there's just women they are you know doing something with the name bed woman's pass right and also there is days when it's misty because we are moving in between different ecosystems but that doesn't matter because what matters is that we did it. We got to the mountain. It's the feeling that you can have of satisfaction, that achievement you did. And that's the challenging part because sometimes people can find this, you know, challenging and they get to the top and they said, I knew I was able to do this, right? Some other ones don't even feel it, just some people. There is actually a way to celebrate, and of course, that's by screaming and saying, We made it! Everybody, right, says that. So let's see a little video, a very short video, that is showing us how excited people are. Mm -hmm. Loading, 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 loading. Yes, did it. Right? We spent something like half an hour on top on this second day, and then we are ready to go down to the camp. And the camp will be on this. I'm sorry for moving this. We'll be in this side. You can see down here in the valley. And we have something like one and a half hours to two hours. And we have stairs, but it's just downhill. Let me remind you what was the elevation of Cusco. Cusco was by 3,600 meters. Oh, I'm saying wrong. By 3,350. This camping place is by 3,600 meters. It's only 250 meters higher than Cusco. That will be the highest you spend the night at. You were by 4,200 and you come down 600 meters, right? So at the end, you don't really feel much of the altitude. On the way up, yeah, but once you go down, you don't really feel. Look at that amazing view that we have from the camp. We are surrounded by lots of you know, forest, bushes, trees in this place. The porters have set already the camp. You just have to arrive to the camp, wait for your lunch, have your lunch in between one or two, and then, you know, just relax. Actually have time for stretching, for a little siesta. In a way, let me tell you this. During that four days, you will be spoiled. With morning views like this one, with waterfalls behind you, right? That you can enjoy once you wake up. We finish already the second day. Let's see before we move to this if there is questions about the second day. Hey, watcher. Yeah, we are getting actually a couple of questions. Um, if we're going to answer one of them, uh, there's been a few questions about drinking water. Um, is it bottled? Who carries it? How does that work? Actually, thank you. Uh, on the Inca Trail, we are forbidden to take a single use bottles. So you have to have your canteen or your water bottle, right? So for the first part, for the first three hours of the first day of the Inca Trail, you need to bring your own water. After it, from lunch until last breakfast, our people, our cook will boil water mountain water. 
from lagoons and from glaciers. But we still boiled it. We filled it and then we boiled it. So you have chances to fill up your bottles during breakfast time, during lunch time, and obviously dinner time as well. So whatever for us is not a problem. That's awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Wachi. All right. So we already finished the second day. We already are no, more relaxed. And now it's coming the third day. Look at this chart. It's telling us how much we are going up and the morning is 300 meters. Then after you know, the first mountain, we are going for about 150 meters, but then we are descending. And you can see there is 1000 meters that we go down and that's this part, right? The end of the day. So more than uphill in this third day, we have downhill. And the third day, we call it the unforgettable day. And that's because there is lots of things that are going to amaze you in this day. It's longer day. The whole distance we're walking this day is 16 kilometers, but that's with lots of stops, right? So let's get on this day. Vamos, wake up at about 5, 5.30 in the morning, have your breakfast, and then by 6, 6.30, we already are climbing the mountain and we go for about an hour you can see the second camp down there and we make a stop at this beautiful small inca building that you can see and it's about 7 30 8 in the morning and the sun is shining it was actually very misty in the morning but the sun he came and it burned all the mist and we can enjoy the view check out how sharp the mountains are you can see there is different groups around here this is a small no Inca remain that was a resting place in all times and still in these days as well. And to this point, we already had walked one hour going up in this third day. We have 40 more minutes and 40 more minutes to see a glorious view. Glorious because it's a place where lots of people that I met told me that they felt connected with the nature. And this is the reason why. Glacier, glacier. Bonanta Veronica. Yeah, that's a modern name. It was called Wakai Wilka. And a closer view of another glacier right here that is called Puma Siyu. The shape of the peaks have the shape of Puma's claws, right? Puma or Puma, the mountain lion. Look at the view that we have of this place, right? We go to the top of this uh, second mountain in about two hours and we're getting ready. So once we are ready, we are getting stretched a little bit for the downhill part, which is not that long, but we are building the team spirit, like practicing a little bit of yoga and things like this. So we are going to walk down now for something like 20 minutes to a lookout point that is showing us where exactly we are moving, because to this point, we are still on the highlands. And we are moving down to what I mentioned before, the subtropical rainforest. And look at this, how this one is changing. You can see the grass, the highland grass here, straw, and how misty is down here, but how the vegetation is getting thicker down here, right? So this is the transition section that we have between the highlands and the subtropical rainforest. And one more time, once more, subtropical rainforest forest so we have chances to have rain yes we do but it's you never know when let's walk for something like 40 more minutes to get to a viewpoint a lookout point that is showing us where we could go look let me zoom in a little bit there is this remember i told you unforgettable day look at the construction type that we have located in a very steep section of the mountain the name of this small inca town it is uh, Sayak Marka, and actually that means inaccessible town. It doesn't really look that clear, but this uh, section where I'm pointing, it has 100 steps, I and mean, it's very steep to get inside of this place. But let's already get inside of this place. Sayak Marka, it's a town that is quite unusual. Lots of the Inca towns got farming land around them. This one doesn't have, doesn't have what is a requirement has water has land for construction but does not have any land for agriculture so the question is why to build a town that was not related to agriculture which was the main economic activity of the inca people look at that construction this is the ceremonial of religious sector of the place right there was a guy that called this place actually make excavations of this place and said that this was a fortress right but after him there was other people that called this cleansing center and that's the reason why it could be restricted they said not a surprise that in these days in peru we still use ayahuasca 
and San Pedro cactus, which are hallucinogen plants, which is not a surprise that the ancient Peru inhabitants have practiced massive spiritual retreats. Could be that this was a cleansing center and they were making kind of ceremony before they go to Machu Picchu. But also there is no description that describes this place as a miner's town and that's why there was no agriculture at all. Well, you can see the view on the right there is a fine line that is the Inca Trail. We're going to move in this place. From here to lunch, there will be two more hours that we are walking, right? So plus the other three hours, we already had walk five hours to this. Uh, we will be walking five hours to lunch place. So let's get on our walk and see what this is about. The third day is unforgettable because this section of the Inca Trail is well preserved. And by that, this is what I wanted to, uh, to show you. The Inca Trail is well preserved and this section of the Inca Trail, actually the whole two hours, is that good that no restoration, no uh, works that the uh, park rangers have done in this place. You can see stones that these people have used to pave the ground, right? But it's not just stones, it's actually a wall that at times is one meter and in other times it's four meters tall. And you know, the whole distance of the Inca Trail is 62,000 kilometers. Can you imagine that? Trails that will be like this for 62,000 kilometers. Everybody uses that expression, all the ways go to Rome. And in this side of, of the world, so well, let's say Latin America, by 15, 14, uh, 1200, all the ways went to Cusco using that network of Inca Trail, right? Knowing that Cusco was the capital of the whole Inca kingdom. Well, let's carry on because it's not just walls that these people have built. No, if there was the chance, they used the mountain. And this is the way how they have used the mountain. Look at this, check in that picture. It's a natural rock formation and the trail is going in. The tunnel has 20 meters uh, distance or long. And you get inside of this, but it's amazing how they adapted the mountain to be part of the trail, right? So you get, let's see, you get through this tunnel and there is a surprise that you have at times. Could be any in any section of these two hours, but there is this. Lots of people go to scare. Lots of people scream, but lots of people fell in love with this view as well. Look at this. Check on this amazing view. It looks like you're touching the sky. It looks like this is the end of the world, right? Well, in a different way. You know what I mean. This is our lunch place. And it's the last lunch at the high altitude. We are here by 3,600 meters. That is like uh, maybe uh, 12,000 uh, 12, foot. And we can already see Machu Picchu Mountain down here. Can you see that little you know, triangular mountain right there? That is Machu Picchu Mountain. But right behind this, we have Machu Picchu Inca Town. The construction of Machu Picchu is perfect. They use the mountain to somehow to hide this place. Even from up here, it's not visible, right? So let's see what happens here. Look at this. If you want your lunch outdoors, there you have it. That's the way how you can have your lunch. You want your lunch indoors, that's all right. You can have it in a tent, but also this time of the day, which is like one or two in the afternoon. And to this point in this third day, you already had walked 10 kilometers, right? It's a good time to have a team picture with all your porters to interact a little bit more with them. Cause after this, you know, it's going to get dark and you want to see the whole team of porters that were hiking with you. Right? Obviously, by this day, the porters have less weight in their backpacks as well. Right? So you can see this little place. We are at the lunch place right now, and we are moving down to this place. We are leaving lunch place and moving into this next Inca place. Built at 3,600 meters, almost 12,000 foot. What was the purpose of this place? With the view of Machu Picchu Mountain, possibly it was a religious place in the old uh, religion, right? Inca religion, they have practiced animism. That they, it means that they believe 
that the nature has power, and especially that glaciers, mountains, lagoons, river, any other element of the nature got a spirit. Possibly it's a place where they could make ceremonies to honor the spirit of the glaciers that you could see around because this is the last time you can see many of those glaciers. Because after this, you just lose elevation. You get lower and lower and you don't see the top of many of those glaciers. So we had walked just five minutes down to this place. Yeah, it's very short, the distance. And then we are going to go to this place. I'm going to zoom. Can you see this section of the mountain? Just horizontal lines. Those are farming terraces. We are walking for about two hours to this place, right? And um, not just to see the amazing construction that the Inca people did, also to see the spectacular view of the sacred valley of the Incas. We have been on the second day in that valley. We can still see the same river, of course, further up in this valley, and we already see the view. And what kind of views can we see? Look at this amazing view. We already are properly in the subtropical rainforest, a different ecosystem. Has been raining. You can see the rainbow behind these people. Has been raining, but it doesn't rain the whole time. There is times when you can have sunshine and beautiful view of the rainbow. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when the mood changes, right, everything changes and you can do uh, some crazy things like these people here, right? They are not exhausted, believe me, their knees are still strong and they decided to carry each other on this human pyramid. And in some places there you still have llamas, right? Llamas are actually what the Inca people have used as horses, not for riding. Those were the birding animals, the pack animals. They just put uh, some weight on the llamas. Llamas can carry something like 20 kilos. Llamas were used as other civilizations to use horses. And alpacas were used as sheep. We use, use the meat from alpaca, we use the fiber of alpaca. But from llama, not really. The fiber is not so fine. Right? So that's uh, one of the reasons why we have llamas to understand a little bit more the purpose. Let's move to another corner in the same spot. And we can see a closer view of valley and different angle of this valley. And that's the view that you have of these mountains. Machu Picchu mountain is very close to us. It's on the right. We are very close to Machu Picchu right here. And the camping place for the third night is down here, right? So it's going to take us half an hour more to walk down to this place. And we are walking down until we get to our camping place but as we still have the energy we can leave the backpacks at our camp you can see up here on the left there is the terraces where we've been and now we are here there is much picture mountain right in front of us very close to us so we get to the camp we leave our day packs in our camping place and we walk for about 10 minutes until we get a surprise up to the time of the day, up to the energy. Some people go, some people don't go. But I always recommend you to go to Winyai Waina. That name, which is native language, Quechua, right? Means in English, always young. Because the way how this one looks, look at this. The mountain is steep by building terraces. They managed to make one spot right there, one area where they could build their houses. Right? And it's not even a hundred years since this place was found. It was discovered in 1941. Machu Picchu was found in 1911. So it's, well, not recent, but it was hidden, right? Even in the modern time when people about, knew about the existence of Machu Picchu, they didn't know about the existence of this place. Let me go up somewhere here. Can you see the top of the mountain? Is where we came from, right? That was the section of 1,000 meters that we walk down. Of course, it's not like vertical 90 degrees, it's coming in switchbacks, right? And it takes three hours to get to this camp. Well, now we had finished the third day. By nighttime, we tell goodbye to the porters. And look what happens on the last day. But before we move to the last day, let's see. Maybe questions? I think everybody right now is in awe with the beauty that we're seeing in these photos. Um, so no pressing questions right now, but thanks, Wachi. All right. So the last day, the fourth day of the hike, but for the whole uh, tour that we have will be the sixth day, right? Well, last day. Wake up time is early in the morning. What time? 3, 3.30 after the tour group. 
right? We wake up late, believe me. Why do tour groups wake up earlier? Because they want to be at one checkpoint, which is located at the same camp, and they want to be the first ones, believe me. No need, no reason to be the first tour group because all the tour groups wait in line. And actually, at 5.30, the rangers will come and open this checkpoint and all the tour groups can get through. So there's no reason to be early in this place. But anyway, we have to wake up that we have to wake up early by 3.30, right, latest, because in this day, we don't just wake up here. We still provide breakfast, we need to get our stuff ready, and actually our porters, they have to go down to the valley to catch the train that takes them back to Cusco. One single train for the whole porters. And the amount of porters that usually we have on the Inca Trail from all the tour groups is something like 300. So the whole train is for that 300 people with that 300 backpack. So they take all the equipment back to Cusco, right? So look at this last day. The elevation we're going to get gained, it's only 100 meters, right? So going up and coming down is 250. Not much. Distance, it's only six kilometers that we walk in this day. Time is like almost two hours that is still going to take us, right? So let's go to the checkpoint. We already woke up by 3.30 in the morning. We are at the checkpoint right there, waiting, lining up at this place together with all the other two groups. Maybe we're in between the, the last ones or in the middle. We don't want to be the first ones. And, you know, we still provide you in the last morning light breakfast because people don't want to eat, but it's still, you know, needed to have something hot, something else to eat, right? Once we get through, at about 5.30 in the morning, we start our walk to the local point, the Sun Gate. And once we get to this place, we can see what was lost for 400 years. The unique place of Machu Picchu, with no human presence for that long time, with no Spanish arrival to this place. At about 7.30 in the morning, you get to the sand gate and you can see this is actually a notch on the mountain that offers you the view of Machu Picchu. But obviously, you can see Machu Picchu, but it's in the distance. It's not that famous view because that popular famous coastal picture is from the same place of Machu Picchu. But you get to the sand gate and you say, made it, made it after four days, right? No civilization, nothing on the way, pure adventure. And there is different hours or different ways how you can arrive to Machu Picchu. The first picture was just with clouds. This one was, is with the actual sunshine shining on Machu Picchu. The sun gate is because it's aligned with summer solstice, right? And down here in this side of the world, in this hemisphere, summer is in December. So it's up to, you know, the, the time that you can see Machu Picchu with light or with clouds or up to the season. Right? So these are tour guides that work with us now and they have been taking tour groups. Actually, there is six of them. So that means three tour groups of G Adventures that was hiking until they got to the sun gate, right? Now, look at that pretty view that we have. How our travelers are you know, celebrating their arrival to the sun gate, but the view of Machu Picchu is still a little bit far. Now, let's walk something like 40 more minutes until we get to the actual place of Machu Picchu and get to the celebration corner and there you see the view of Machu Picchu. Look at the beautiful view of this place, right? We get to this place, we spend some time for our pictures and everything, and then we are going to take you in a guided tour around Machu Picchu. This is going to last for about two hours in Machu Picchu, right? And there will be views like this that we can take, right? And also days like this. Can you see the mist? Lots of people that arrived to Machu Picchu, I'm very sure that they are saying that when I was there, it was no sunny. Yeah, when you were in the morning, but as the time was passing, it cleared up. Believe me, there was no time when Machu Picchu was cloudy the whole day. All these people got the chance to see Machu Picchu. And this is in February, right? I'm saying wrong, this is in January, because February, the Inca Trail is closed. This is in January. So even in the rain season, Machu Picchu is still visible all the time, right? So we take you in the guided tour and then we catch a bus from Machu Picchu down to Aguascalientes Town. This will be a shuttle bus, right? They have the system right there from the, a private company. And we get to 2,000 meters, Aguascalientes, Hot Springs Town, where we have our lunch. And then we catch the train, 
At about three in the afternoon, we are catching the train to return back to Yantai Tambo. And it's two hours train ride. And look at that train. Well, there is two train companies, but we only use this train. So it's panoramic. You are, you know, the train is running along the valley and you can enjoy the beautiful view that we have, right? So we have two hours train ride and then our van or our bus is going to wait for us after the train and then drive back to Cusco for two more hours. Two hours train and then two hours bus back to Cusco, right? We are getting back to Cusco at about seven-ish. And uh, after we get a shower, we dress nicely and everybody agrees to go for a farewell dinner, we do it, right? And that's the way how actually our tour groups will generally you know, celebrate uh, the end of this adventure with a beautiful dinner at the end in any restaurant that we have and enjoying, of course, the Peruvian cuisine. So, and celebration and some be to be here as well, if people want for sure. Well, Thank you, hope this was very helpful to understand a little bit more of what is the Inca Trail like. And if there's questions, please shoot those questions now. That was amazing, Wachi. Um, I do want to end with one final question before we end as a group and we announce the grand prize winner. Um, so what would be the best time you would recommend um, to go and do the Inca Trail trek? The best time? The best time is when you feel ready for it. I don't think there is the best time, down here especially, because in the dry season, there has been times when personally I experience rain because we are very close to the tropic, we are very close to the equator, we have sunshine, we have rain as well. So the, 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 the time when it's dry season, there is lots of people, so it's very busy. It's the time when uh, we, we have we don't really have low season. We have standard season and high season. In the standard season, people come, there is less people, but also that you can you know, see some clouds and things like that. So I don't think there is a special time to come to see Machu Picchu or the Inca Trail. Any time works better. Of course, not in February when the Inca Trail is closed. Perfect. All right, so you hear that everybody, I know everybody was asking that a lot throughout the chat box of when they should go. So anytime that you're ready is the best time. Um, and just want to end on a few notes before I announce the winner. Um, thank you all for taking the time to connect with us and join Jade Ventures for our live virtual um, group tour. Wachi gave us an exclusive experience trekking the Inca Trail. And I know we'll all continue to dream about the beauty and wonder of the Inca Trail, whether you're reliving the experience or seeing it for the first time. If you enjoyed your adventure with Wachi, you can show your appreciation by tipping him through PayPal. I've shared the link in the chat box. You'll receive an email after this as well with the link. This, e this money goes directly to Wachi, helping support him until he's able to do what he does best, and that's sharing our world in real life. And you all may um, be wondering about the G Adventures porters. Our porters, cooks, and horsemen in Peru's Sacred Valley play an integral part and helping our travelers have a truly life-changing experience. And you can now help them through supporting um, our Porter Fund. I've shared the link for that as well. You can also find it at gadventures.com slash porter dash fund. Um, and then we can finally um, announce what maybe what you all were waiting for. Um, so let's finish things off with our prize giveaway. Our friends at Krog Hoppers, are going to supply one lucky winner to get Inca Trail ready with an amazing prize to help kick them out with everything they need for the trek. And this includes a 20 liter day pack and a pair of Salado high trekking boots. And we will also be taking three runners up to receive a Crag Hoppers Nelson t-shirt. The winners must be in, ten in attendance. Um, I have made sure and I've seen them on here before I just started talking. So I hope they're still here. Um, but so we have as our grand prize winner, as Alessandro Magriara, I hope I said that right. Um, so that's Alessandra Magriara um, as our grand prize winner. Congratulations. We'll send you an email following this with the um, email that you have registered to the webinar with. And then our three prize winners for the t-shirts. Um, that is first, we have Joe Adams. Second, we have Jennifer Crossan. And third, we have Lucy Ma. 
So Joe Adams, Jennifer Crossan, Lucy Ma, the three of you will re be receiving um, Crag Hopper t-shirts. And so we're so lucky with, to connect with our friends at Crag Hoppers and be able to share that gift to you all. Um, if you didn't win, it's all right. Thank you so much for joining us on our tour to the Inca Trail. Um, it was an absolutely incredible experience and I think we were all incredibly impressed by Wachi's storytelling throughout and the amazing photos he shared. So thank you so much, Wachi. Um, for everybody viewing, keep an eye out for more live virtual tours hosted by more CEOs from all of, over the world. And until then, stay connected. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye and thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.